hello welcome to let me bore you to sleep my name's Jason Newland and Andre yet again has woken up just as I started the recording he's gone back in his uh, bag again it's ridiculous honestly I did I did a deep sleep whisper recording a couple of hours ago and he was fast asleep in the living room so I close the living room door I go into the bedroom close the bedroom door and I start making this recording it's only 20 minutes long so I thought it should be fine within about two minutes Scratch, 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 scratch. And I thought, how did, didn't know he could talk. No, he's in it, he was scratching at the door. It, was, <laughs> it wasn't even quiet. It was proper, like, continuous, and he wouldn't stop. So I had to pause the recording, go and get him. I put him into his cage which he hasn't been in for months until the end of the recording and then I the, the cage is in the storeroom okay I heard him making noise in there so I guess he was trying to get out of the cage as soon as I finished the recording, I went and let him out of the cage. Picked him up, closed the door of the storage room, walked into the living room and put him down on the floor. He ran straight back to the storage room, started scratching at the storage room door. He seems to be on a permanent wind up. Honestly, I don't like yesterday. He, two things, weird things he did. He was in the kitchen with me, and I think I was just doing a washing up or something. So he was just sitting there for a few minutes watching me. I go out of the kitchen, I think it was to get a plate or something from the living room, walk back in the kitchen. I nearly tread in a big turd. He's done a massive poo right in front of the kitchen sink. And he's just sitting there looking at me. <laughs> like it wasn't was me. You know what else he did? He actually walked up to it and sniffed it. As if he was like trying to figure out where it came from. Like he didn't know anything about it. And then about half an hour later, well, probably not even that long, I'm sitting here, I've got a can of Coke in the drink holder in my chair. And I'm just sitting watching telly. He jumps up, walks up my leg, climbs up, and he rubs his bum all over my can of Coke, the top of the can. He never does that. At least I hope, oh God, I just realised maybe he does do that when I'm not around. Oh. So I want to leave the chair with the Coke, can of Coke in the holder, and I go into the bedroom and do something or to the bathroom. Who knows what he's doing? Oh. Ooh. So that was a bit annoying, but I can't believe he did it in front of me though. It's one thing being naughty, but to do it in front of me blatantly. So yeah, what other things? What is it with bathroom lights? Is it is it some kind of contract? Whoever invited though invented those 
string lights for bathrooms that you pull down. It was, I don't know, they, did the inventor create it and it was like really happy, but the patent office said, no, you can only, you can only be patented, be able to paint it, patent, whatever that was. We can patent it if you make it so loud that all your neighbors can hear every time you switch the light on and off. That would have gone together if I'd always able to say the word patent. Oh, I can say it now. Patent. Had a couple of people ask me questions. Uh, one was on YouTube and the other one was somewhere else. I think it might have been YouTube, I don't know. One person, and I've not replied yet because I only just saw the messages today, asking for the old video that I did years ago where I stretch my words. It might be the try and stay try and stay awake with hypnosis or just try and stake away try and stake my words try and stay awake hypnosis challenge or sleep challenge or something like that other than that I don't know I've made too many recordings to remember each individual one I don't know what I said in pretty much any of them really and I had another person ask me again I don't know where I saw this message but this was today as well I think it might be in YouTube also asking where what recording was the one where I talk about being in the sea cadets I don't know I can't remember. I can remember being in the Sea Cadets, but I don't remember talking about being in the Sea Cadets. Well, I kind of vaguely remember talking about it. Was it the session where I'm talking about knots? Because uh, I've got a book on knots. That might have been the one. I don't know. And so since yesterday, quite a few things have changed. You know me, I like to make changes. Um, so what have I done? I'm now back to <laughs> I'm now back to just one website, adjacentnewland.com. Just one website. That's the only one I got now. And it's the only one I need. Don't need lots of websites. And I've got rid of the others. Uh, I got rid of two podcasts, SoundCloud and the podcast.co. And also, <laughs> I wasted money yesterday. I should just wasted it. And yeah, I did. I also got rid of the Jason Newland dot store, so that's gone. And I'm not gonna. Oh, one place gonna to climb up and rub his willy over my coke now. You're not doing it, Andre. He's gonna now. There's something wrong with him. I can't believe it. He picked up his girlfriend. Let's see what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you into the bedroom. Taking you away from him. I don't normally do this, I've not 
Normally I'd put it on pause and do it, but I'm, it's following me, it's following me. And now he's buying at my slippers. You hear it? What do you want? What do you want? It's gone away again. Good. Hopefully he'll stay away. For at least... No, oh, he won't. He'll be back. Anyway, what... Um, it's weird. I'm not used to making this recording in the, sitting on the edge of my bed. He just rubbed himself over everything. I've got dumbbells, like weights, in my bedroom on the floor. on there holding him he's, he's squeaking why are you squeaking mate why are you squeaking can you hear him panting He's now licking off my hand. What do you want, Andre? What exactly do you want? I wish I knew and I could... I'd still ignore it. I know you wouldn't get it, but at least I knew what... You know, at the moment, I don't know what it is you want that I'm not giving you. At least if I knew what it was, I'd know what it was that I was that I'm not going to give you anyway. Make it more enjoyable for me. Look at me like that. I'm only kidding. Why are you so weird? Do you hear what he said there? Call me weird if you see yourself in the mirror. That's so Andre, that's rude. Are you talk about myself? My mirror like that. I've got a very handsome mirror. No, it's not from a fun fair. He sewed... What, like a magic mirror? Crazy mirror? You're just rude. So, I... Earlier today, I took him out for a walk. And this evening, he's been scratching at the front door to get out. He's been hassling me. Every time I move, he jumps out of his bag and he follows me around. So I took him for a walk tonight. Just running around. Just running up and down the hall into the different rooms. I don't know what's wrong with him, honestly. And I took him for a walk just after midnight. I don't generally go out at that time of night. It's too early in the morning for him to be making so much noise. It's quarter past two. I really, I don't, everything's louder, isn't it, in the, in the early hours. <sighs> Perhaps I just need to put him back in his cage. But I like the idea of him being able to have the freedom of running around whenever he wants, but he don't have to push the barrier, he pushes pushes that button I don't mean he's a considerate lover I mean he's very you know crosses the line quite a bit with what he does 
Anyway, I took him for this walk and he had me walking around for about an hour because the lights go off, the street lights just suddenly went off just as I was walking through the park and it was pitch black lunch. <laughs> Luckily, there's a school with some lights so it wasn't, you know, I could kind of see where I was going but it's, it's apparently we, you know, we don't pay enough council tax anymore to cover the cost of having the lights on all night like they used to be. And I was just, Arr. It's like, oh great, now I'm in the middle of the park on my own, no lights, great. And he's just laughing, because he can, he can see fine at, at night. And most of his, I think he just uses smell mainly more than anything. We do it different ways, he can, he can smell and I just call smells. So... Yeah, I don't know what recording that was with the sea cadets in. I don't remember what I spoke about. I just... All I know is I wish Andre would show up. <laughs> just him. And he's been doing this more recently. For some reason. I don't know why, because... Quite often he's quiet for hours and hours and hours. And then as soon as I start talking and making a recording, he pops out and starts running around and causing chaos. I don't know why he's doing it. I don't know. But I want to get the garden shed, which should be here within the next week. And I get that built and I get it all fitted out with the soundproofing that I've already got. It'll be in a different room. And I won't hear him scratching because I won't hear anything. Because I'll have my own little studio. Little soundproof recording studio. And that'll be good. I'll be pleased with that. But then I'm going to miss... I quite like looking at stuff when I'm making a recording. I'm sitting on my bed... Unfortunately, I got him in the background going, and making all these weird um, erotic noises. But opposite me, I've got, well, I've got my body sculpture sit up board, abdominal board that I use well, to stack clothes and could maybe use it for exercise one day and across me just to opposite me I've got two bookcases and I've got two pairs of shoes and a pair of trainers on top because I can't leave anything like that on the floor because Andre just ruins them I won't even go into what he, do, what he does but he ruins them and then I've got my ukulele in a box on top the ukulele that I've not even even attempted to learn to play yet I've not even tuned the strings and I've got an electric tuner that I got so I need to get that out and start learning to play it but I think it's because it's up there I don't see it so I don't think about it And I've got my books on the bookcase. I've got one, two, three, four. Let me read the books I've got. Oh, stand up for this. Oh, excuse me, I just burped. That's lovely, isn't it? It's what sound effects. So as I was saying, this isn't going to be a business. This I've given up on that idea. Because as soon as I try and think about making money out of this, I don't want to do it anymore. Isn't that weird? So, even though I was going to do five recordings a week for free, and the rest I was going to charge a pound for, I lost interest. Didn't want to make any, really, after that. 
So I can't charge. I can't. I just can't. So it has to stay completely free forever and ever, which means I had to get rid of or cut down the expenses by a lot. So by getting rid of like the websites and stuff, and so the only expenses I've got other than the internet is the the I think thirty odd pound a month for that, thirty pound or so for the Spreaker podcast hosting, and another tenner for the website. So that's that thirty so it's seventy pound a month. So, yeah, it's weird, isn't it? So, that's what I've done. I'm still waiting to hear from the college, from the university, so I don't know what's going to happen there. But, God, Andre's just following me around. So, honestly, I feel like I'm a Pied Piper, but we've just... not very popular. I've only just got one. Well, he's not a rat, is he, but... Well, no, they were mice, weren't they? Pied Piper of Hamilton. Whatever. So let's have a look at the books that I've got. I know what he's thinking. He's thinking, oh, what can I do to make more noise? What can I do to just annoy Daddy? He's trying to figure it out. He's under the chair. I can almost read his mind. What if I pull stuff off the Pull stuff off the chair, that'll make some noise. It's just looking up at me like he wants. What What do you want? What actually, Andre, do you want? <laughs> the hardest thing about him is no matter how annoying he gets. He looks up at me and he's just so damn cute. He's got just the cutest little face. And sometimes he'll stand there and he looks exactly the same as he did when he was a baby. Just a bigger, just a bigger version. And if you want to see that picture, if you go to my Facebook page, the normal Facebook page, there's a picture of him. Um on there, not the, the main picture of me holding him or whatever, but, um, where he's all wrapped up in a towel, but there's a little picture down there, on the left hand side of him, and he was tiny in that and he looks like that sometimes, just looks, just looks at me with these innocent eyes and he's so cute and now he's probably gone to sleep Unless he heard me say how cute he is, and he's happy. So, oh, my daddy loves me really. Even though he moans all the time, I don't moan all the time. So I'm just looking at my book collection. These are the non-hypnosis books I've got in here. I've got a few like self-help. Again, not all of them, but a few self-help books. Uh, kind of self-help. I've got. What have I got? But also some comedy books and some books on Buddhism. What one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight Buddhist books. And I've got. Four books by Charles Bukowski. No, five. Tales of a Dirt of an Ordinary Madness. Women. Tales of a Dirty Old Man. Factotum and Post Office. That's kind of five of his most famous books. Charles Bukowski. I've also got The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Paolo. I've got Richard Back's Illusions, Chicken Soup for the Soul. I like Jack Jack Kenfield. I really like. If you ever get a chance, 
to listen to Jack Canfield's audiobook where he's he's I don't know what it's called because I used to own it years ago I mean I'm talking uh, 2005 time I used to listen to it a lot and it's really inspirational it wasn't pretty sure it wasn't chicken but it wasn't chicken soup for the soul it was his own things I don't know like wisdom or his own kind of take on stuff it's very good and what have I got Sylvia Plath the gel the bell jar <sighs> couple of books by uh, Richard Dawkins I've not read either of those I've got Drop the Pink Elephant what on earth is that oh. 15 ways to say what you mean and mean what you say can't even remember buying this one as GMTV anchor I interviewed hundreds of people every year however however well they interviewed every single person would find it easy to explain the case by following these simple their case by following these simple principles as Eamon Holmes I oh. wonder who he is. It says sharpen your conversation by first spotting, then dropping the pink elephant. Getting rid of the jargon. Learning to speak in pictures. Recognizing when you should apologize or thank people. Captivating an audience. That's illegal, isn't it? Cost me one pound fifty. This book must have got it from a charity shop. Ah. I do wonder when he talks about the pink elephant. Uh. I was looking at this. Is that a pink elephant? Now I'm making my own noise. Pink elephant is often used in a in an NLP where they talk about you know what we focus on to, by trying to be positive in your communication because even if you're negative that gets people focusing on what you're saying. For example, don't think of a pink elephant. You just think of a pink elephant. Um so I was wondering if that's where you got that from, but no one just biting my feet again. Great. Stop it. Ah, oh, what I watched today. Check it out if you. Well, if you want to. Yeah, it's Lauren Hardy. Um, I don't know what it's called. I think it. I, don't, I think it's not just called Lauren Hardy, but it might be. It's basically the life story of them as their career ended, like the last part of their lives. It's Steve Coogan and I forget his name, um, another American actor. It's very famous, very. Um, but they both dress up like the characters and. It starts really at the end of their career in films, in movies. And they split up. And uh, 
Stan, Laurel, Oliver, yeah. Oliver Hardy. Stan Laurel's contract was up with um, with their, you know, the, the film company or whatever. But Oliver Hardy still had time to go on his contract. So Stan Laurel decided he was going to uh, they should take control of their own destiny because they made 150 films together or something like that and they should do they should start earning some money because they didn't have much money and Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton or whatever were like millionaires so Stan Laurel organised for a contract for them both and to, for, with a new company a new Warner Brothers or something but Oliver Hardy decided you know he didn't want to get in trouble or whatever and he stayed with the the company that he was already with because he had a contract with them and then they fell out for years apparently until someone in England went fired into England to do some shows here and they thought they had a film, you know, they were going to do a film, so a new film. So it's kind of them getting back together, doing some live stage shows in England. And just how it's, it's very it's emotional, but it's about their relationship and how much they really loved each other, really knew each other. And it's really good film. I mean, if nothing else, they should it should be up for Oscars. For the how well they performed, regardless of the the actual acting within the film, but the taking off of the characters because they do sketches and everything in it and it's great, it's really good so yeah, I would suggest watching it if you get a chance I watched it on I think it was Amazon I think I watched it on Amazon Prime don't worry, I don't get any money if you watch it <laughs> I just get the I just get the satisfaction of your happiness. <laughs> it is a, it's a good film. And it's one of those, I'll be honest, yeah, I watched it all the way through from start to finish. I didn't have a break and sometimes I watch a film for like an hour and then I feel like, just thought, oh, I'm going to do something else now. But I just watched this all the way through. It's really... Um, engaging, really engaging film. So, I recommend it if you get a chance. I don't know. I don't know what to do with him. It's almost like he's he wants something, but I don't know what it is he wants. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I thought almost like it maybe it would have been because he spent all the weekend, well, it's Saturday night on Sunday, with somebody else in the flat. And then someone else was in the flat again. It's here early on, on Saturday evening. And then they were here, someone else was here again on Sunday, and someone was here on Monday. Today, which yesterday, there's not really been much like activity. So maybe he's he kind of got used to being around other people, because if there's someone else there, he ignores me. It's all over them, and he, he likes. He's more of a people's person than I am. It wouldn't take much to be better 
to be more of a people's person but he, he really likes being around people genuinely and he's not fussy I mean the other day I think I mentioned it I was just walking across the park going to the garage so I had him with me and there was a couple of ladies talking and one of their kids came up and said can I can I hold him and take him for a walk I said, and I said you have to ask your mum mum said all right so I just stood with the parents and she she just walked off <laughs> to the other side of the park Andre didn't look back once didn't look back didn't care it's like honestly come on mate and uh, one of the, the, the mothers, there was two women there, one, she said, oh, she, she took him for a walk the other day as well, do you remember? And yeah, I do, was, I forgot. And all kids look the same, don't they? So he, I don't know if it's he felt comfortable because he's met her before, or he just doesn't care, he just, he's off. No loyalty at all. Because if it was a dog, even if a dog like knows you really well, and you're a visitor to the house, and you know gets to see you a lot, if it's your dog and the dog's at the other side of the park on the lead with someone else. The dog is very light to look back at you to see what you're doing. Not Andre. Straight ahead, no interest. It's almost like he wanted to leave home. It's like at last, freedom. Freedom from being able to run in and out of every single room of the flat. Whereas if he lived anywhere else, he'd be in a cage most of the time. Probably wouldn't get a chance to go for a walk. And if he did, it wouldn't be as often as I do, possibly. But it might be, it might be more often, who knows. Arr. I'm so angry. Arr. So, well, um... Isn't it weird how quickly things change? Because as soon as I got rid of all those other websites, bang, 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 gone. I did that this morning when I woke up. I suddenly felt... Um, motivated to make new recordings. I think it's, I need at least one website, not just for, as a, not a business card, but for people to come and see what I've got, what I've got, that's between me and the doctor, now for, to see what, you know, because all my recordings are on the website, everything that I've done is on the website, where you can contact me on the website, you can whatever and I need that for me as well so that I can continuously build it because that will have thousands and thousands of pages on it eventually it's already got well, we've got well over a thousand pages already because each post and that's over a thousand posts, over a thousand recordings. So each one has got its own page. So yeah, so it's over about, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Wow. And, well, that is quite a lot. So I'm gonna be, it just gives me something to, I like to, tinker around on it and play around and change things a little bit and you know I want to I'm 
thinking of maybe doing a blog on there as well, but I'm not sure. But at the moment, every time I make a new recording, I do add it to the website. So that's, that's, I'm quite happy with the website as it is. Seems to be going all right. I'm getting, I'm getting people visit, getting the odd comment, well not comment, but people leaving uh, messages. Uh, and a few testimonials. <sighs> but yeah, it's been a, a strange week, but it has been an unusual week. And what we halfway through because it's when well, it's now Thursday and. I was thinking about making another recording before the end of the night as it's still quite early but if Andre's going to be doing his thing I can just about get away with him running around when I make these recordings just about but I'm, you know, I still don't like it but I can't not with the others the other stuff I do so Although he seems to be now I've gone to sleep. Bless him. Drop the pink elephant. Oh yeah, and I can't be, I'm probably not going to write a book either. <laughs> I, th I think I'm just going to give up on that idea. It's just the idea of going through my recordings and transcribing them. And this is the equivalent, uh, this lovely little whistle, the equivalent of writing a book. It's an audio book, isn't it? Each, each podcast episode or each recording I make is kind of like a chapter to a book. A very unusual book, a very directionless book. Almost me. <laughs> meaningless book but still kind of like a book talking about um, earlier being asked which recording had the what is it the Sea Cadets story on I was thinking about going through the recordings and sort of given a, a rough, not biopsy, that top, um, but what is a biopic of the, or synopsis of the contents of the recording. But just the idea of listening back to anything that I do, just, uh, it's just so boring it really is and it's supposed to be it's even more boring for me because I already know what I'm talking about kind of you know if for me to talk about my book collection and to tell you about the books that are on the shelf is even more boring for me than it is for you because I see them every day and I know what's on the shelf and the idea of talking about them possibly bores me too much to even talk about them which means I probably should talk about them because if it bores me that much then it's very likely it's going to bore you too Also, kind of, if I did do a like a search through of my "Let Me Bore You to Sleep" recordings, I did think two things would be useful. First of all, or three things, I could 
give a description of what the contents are. Secondly, I then know what I've talked about. So then I you know, think of some other things that I could talk about that I've not yet broached upon. Thirdly, I could possibly edit and take out the best bits. Or, in other words, put together a best of Let Me Boil You to Sleep. Which should, should last about five minutes. But I was just thinking, but then how do I know which bits are the best bits? Because each person has their own um, I mean the best bits for some people will be the bits that are the most boring, would send you not really to sleep because of my boring voice and my boring stories. Some people like hearing about Andre, and I get told that because Andre is definitely, he's the star of any recording I make if he's around. He makes himself be heard and any video that I've ever made that he's been on, he's the star of the video. So it'd be hard to know which bits were, or which bits were funny as well so it's kind of how do I know I don't know how so what you could do if any of you are really bored enough you could do it yourself you could download the recordings edit it and put together a recording of the bit of the best bits and then I can if Although to be fair, you could you could put together a, a very unusual audio, couldn't you? Imagine you've got thousands of hours of someone talking. You could just cut and paste various different words together to make something really weird. But um, yeah, if you had the time and the energy and the to put together a collection of best bits and send it to me I could upload it to the podcast and onto the website but I don't know it's <laughs> see one person's best bits may be another person's unbest bits that's not really a word is it unbest but to me laying down and what's that book on there just gonna have a little look think and think and grow rich why is that hiding that's the special book Napoleon Hill think and grow rich see for me it's not about the grow rich part it's not really about the think part either. Oh, I lay down. For me, it's more. It's about the mindset, the positive mindset which excites me it excites, interests I don't know what the right word is but it's something that I actually need 
in my life. I need more positivity. I also need to sit up. So I'm going to sit up. I don't feel very comfortable talking when I'm lying down. I suppose I don't really do it very often. I like to sit up when I'm talking. It's a bit like trying to go to the toilet when you're lying down. I'm used to sitting up. It's just what you're used to, isn't it? Like trying to drive a car backwards while sitting on the roof. It's not, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's what you're used to. I like quiet. Predominantly when I'm making recordings, but I haven't lived in many places that were quiet. If I had, I would have had a lot more recordings, and I would have I'd be a lot better at what I do, because I'd have, I'd have a lot more experience and a lot more uh, would have built more skills, I guess. And if you listen to some of the older recordings, you can hear background sounds. Because it got to the point where I just figured, well, if I wait for it to be quiet, then I'm never going to make a recording. So it's better to make a recording with background sounds than to, mo to not make a recording at, at all. That's what I figured. And... You know, I had a few complaints about the birds in the background. Not many, but uh, some sleep sessions. Someone said I uh, didn't like the birds in the background because I was making them in the summer. The birds start about three o'clock. And as I'm waiting, and in the summer people are up later as well. So sometimes I'm waiting until two or three before I make a recording and then the birds are, are like disco dancing in the trees so now when I get that shed my recording studio there will be a window in it so I'm not just going to be in a no, no, there isn't a window in it. No, there isn't. It's really more a tool shed than a garden shed. It's six foot by five foot. So six foot by five foot. So I should fit in it. I hope so. I imagine that getting it up uh, and they're not being able to fit it in, not being able to fit in it rather. Because I'm, I suppose, I'm probably wider than I think I am in a sense. Just, I don't, you know, I don't want to be squashed. I don't want to be sitting there and having my shoulders touch either side of the walls I don't want that I'd like to have a little bit of room and what I was thinking what I was thinking is if it is big enough and it goes together well what I might do is I'll have a chair in there anyway, but maybe set it up so I can make videos. Get a lighting system in there so it's really bright lights. And then I can start making some proper videos again like I used to. But this time it'll be quiet. I could have a green background so I could, you know, make the background better. I've got the software, uh, digital, you know, the video software to use. 
don't I know the basics I don't I'm not by no means an expert but I know roughly kind of how to edit videos but then I'll have a black background because the the soundproofing is black it's quite nice it's quite nice pattern so with a, a decent light I could probably get away with just the black background but then it would be also quite nice to have uh, like my website in the background and maybe a, a name of some of the podcasts some of the you know let me bore you to sleep deep sleep whisper hypnosis sleep hypnosis weekly uh, oh, whatever the other ones are you know it'd be plus any other things I do in the future because I'm doing this now but I'm bound to think of like something new to do and be putting quite a bit of energy into that so there'll be another podcast that will come along that I'll think ah oh, I'm going to do that as well not not instead of but as well as the ones I'm doing and I don't know what so maybe if anyone's got any ideas the only problem with starting a podcast from scratch which admittedly I did do with the let me bore you to sleeps it's the only one I started from scratch all the other podcasts I uploaded they were just normal recordings that I'd made in the past and I just put them into categories so I had a few hypnosis courses that I'd made years and years ago so I put them onto a podcast and and then categorised things like chronic pain podcast self development podcast sleep hypnosis podcast there was a sleep hypnosis weekly podcast which was already I'd already made seven recordings for the deep sleep whisper hypnosis ones I'd already done seven for and I only started making new ones once they became quite popular so the, this one here the let me bore you to sleep literally I started from scratch with these ones in January or February last year can you believe it in about what is it are we now October in about three months time I'll have been doing this podcast for nearly two years although the previous podcast was deleted so I've only had it on this particular podcast for less than a year. I think it was the 21st of November 2018. And it's now the 3rd of October 2019. And I don't know how many I've got. I think there's 70,000 downloads I think on this podcast I think so about that uh, in the last 11 months but before that I probably had a good probably 10 or 20,000 downloads maybe 10 I don't know I, th I lose track so it would be nice to... I just want to reach 100,000 for each of the podcasts that are, that are like the most popular out of what I do. So I think there's five. Was there two insomnia ones? There's the Sleep Hypnosis Weekly, Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress and Panic Attacks and Anxiety. This one, Let Me Boy to Sleep, and the deep sleep whisper hypnosis six podcasts that are the most popular ones out of all of them 
so I think the relaxation for stress and anxiety one is about 39,000 downloads on that so far and but that gets that's technically one of the more popular ones out of all of them because I've only just been making new recordings since the summer for that so I've got six podcasts and I want them all to have a hundred thousand each and I'd like I know the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis podcast has got 90,000 downloads now another one's got about 93,000 so by the end of the year they'll both have hit the 100,000 and the other one's probably got about 89, 90,000 so that will probably hitch the 100,000 this the way it's going I'll probably yeah it won't reach it might not reach the 100,000 by the end of the year but it'll be near there so I have at least three out of the six will have reached 100,000 downloads and I'm not far off the half a million now I think I'm um, 480 5,000 or something so that'll be a milestone when I reach the 500,000 downloads for the podcast um, which will be before the end of uh, November which means I'll have reached half a million in a year for this pod the, you know for these podcasts and I'll be pleased with that. And then the next milestone would be the million, of course. And then, I don't know, I don't know what the rules are. You know, I've got a few different milestones that I like, that I'm kind of looking forward to. There's the individual podcasts. So I want them all to be at least 100,000 out of the six that are, you know, the most popular and three of those are nearly there already so the other three the, the sleep hypnosis weekly is going to take a, a while because I only make one a week so it's clearly going to take a bit longer than the others where I do maybe a few a week so if I reach a hundred thousand for each of those so that will be one milestone I suppose the second milestone would be, I don't know, half a million for each of the podcasts that are well that are most popular. So to reach the 500,000 for each of those, and then the next milestone would be a million for each of those podcasts. But overall, there's the individual daily podcast like amount. So on a on a day, see I didn't record anything for a few days, so I wasn't feeling particularly well, and I didn't record anything. And when I don't make any new recordings, the the stats go down. So I end up, I think for a few days, just under the two thousand. Uh, downloads for the day but then when I record a new recording it goes up and I've not looked at the stats for yesterday so far because it cuts off around about the half two three o'clock mark but that was about that was two and a half thousand and I've made one recording yesterday so if I was to make two or three a day that hit two maybe would hit to three thousand so it is growing because before when I used to just do one recording or didn't do anything it dropped down to about a thousand maybe twelve hundred for the day so now it really goes below two thousand even when I don't do anything for a while so I look forward to that reaching 
the next target is 4,000 a day. I'm looking forward to reaching like on a regular basis. I mean, I've got over 10,000 some days, but that's rare. I had 5,000, I think, about two weeks ago. And that was just oh, a couple of weeks, yeah, last week or the week before. And that was just random. Five and a half thousand downloads. Don't know why. Didn't do anything different. It just just shot up for some reason. And I started thinking, oh, I kind of got excited. I was thinking, is it going to stay at 5,000? Can you imagine how amazing that would be? It started growing like that. Oh. But uh, I'm looking forward to getting 4,000 a day. And of course, then 5,000. So it's almost like every every thousand it goes up to is a is a milestone but ultimately 5,000 is the first big milestone and then 10,000 will be the next one and then to get it to 20,000 a day and then just keep building it to the point where there's 100,000 a day 100,000 downloads every day between you know all the various podcasts and then I don't know a million a day I suppose would be quite good and that, that's just all down to people discovering me I guess discovering these podcasts and benefiting from them or being entertained by them or whatever uh, reason people read, uh, read, listen to them. So that interests me. I know it's it's not interesting to listen to, probably, but in a way, I'd prefer to have a million people listening every day than to have a million pound in the bank. Although I'd really like to have a million pound in the bank. But if I was reaching a, a million people a day and helping, you know, the majority of those people, the rewards from that are much higher than money. Outscale money by a long, a long way. And also, if I'm reaching a million people a day, then I have a, a capability of earning some good money anyway, just for having that kind of audience, because I could probably get paid to just mention a, a bed. I, you know what I mean? I could probably get a sponsorship deal or something to sponsor a pillow <laughs> sponsor a jar of jam or something like that I did think I could sponsor Horlicks you know that stuff that people drink to go to sleep I could sponsor Viagra although I don't really need it well actually a uh, kind of might now because I've no I don't not now I'm like, yeah no no I, I've never I've never I don't know I've never well I haven't no never done that never taken such things because um, they used to be on prescription only and I would be I'd probably be embarrassed to ask a doctor for a prescription for that but then to go in and get the prescription in the, in the, in the you know the pharmacy and go and collect it I don't think I've probably enjoyed that experience but even less now going into a shop and 
and to tell them what I want because it's going to be behind the counter and you can buy it f without a prescription now but like yeah can I have that please and just point and of course they're not going to know what you're pointing at so I suppose what I do is I just walk in with a, like a big false hand with a big long finger so I can actually touch the product that I want to buy maybe with a little hat with some writing on us please don't mention the name of the item that I'm buying and because basically I don't want to bring attention to myself hand with a massive long finger pointing and knocking over all the merchandise behind the counter saying I want that one and that one and looking around why are you all staring at me <laughs> have you ever seen him have you ever seen an embarrassed middle aged man before anyway I'm going to go and next time I make a recording, I'm going to probably talk about, probably going to look at one of my books, or I might tomorrow go and get a new book to read out of, like in a second hand shop or something. We'll see, we'll see. Yeah, I don't know. But um, other than that, if you have any books that you want to send me that you think I could write, like read out of some, some things with funny facts or boring stuff, or maybe even some newspaper articles that are funny just put a ring around the article or whatever just send a newspaper to me and uh, just go to my website I'll tell you where to send it and if you put your name on it I can read your name out in the recording and you can be famous so I'm going to go thank you very much for listening remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Lots of love.